Well, we're joined now by Senator Maureen Faruqi from Australia's Green Party. And uh, the senator was at the rally, I believe, Senator Faruqi. I absolutely was at the rally. Thanks so much for having me. And you were at the rally because despite the warnings from the Prime Minister on the risk of spreading the virus, you thought there was another principle in play. Explain. So thousands of people in Sydney came out and tens of thousands across Australia in capital cities, in small towns, um, because the Indigenous community had asked us all to come out and support them in their call to stop Indigenous deaths in custody. And it was also in solidarity with George Floyd, his family, and the Black Lives Matter movement. And it, the rally was well organized. People were taking safety precautions as much as they could. And literally everyone was wearing a mask. People had sanitizers, masks were being handed out, and people were social distancing as much as possible. We have seen centuries of oppression and violence against Indigenous people, as well as um, Black Americans. And you know what? Racism kills as well. This is a time in history where we really have to stand up. And so uh, the, just to explain further that parallel that you're drawing between events in the United States subsequent to the death of George Floyd and events in Australia, tell us more about the situation of Australia's indigenous population and why you think that resonates. So Indigenous Australians are the most discriminated against. Um, there is violence that happens against them. They are the most disadvantaged. Uh, the worst of racism occurs against Aboriginal Australians, even to this day. Um, we have seen 434 deaths in custody since 1991, since the Royal Commission handed down its report on Aboriginal deaths in custody. And 30 years on, not even all the recommendations of the Royal Commission have been implemented. And we know the parallels between um, the horrible, horrific, senseless death of George Floyd and of the young Aboriginal man five years ago, David Dungay, whose family was here. The last words of both George Floyd and David Dungay were, I can't breathe. And I think that has opened up really old wounds, of course, for the family, but for the indigenous community. Um, and that's the reason I think this, we're so united with Black Lives Matter at this point in time. But the movement for Aboriginal justice, I must add, has been getting bigger and bigger by the day. Um, this was one of the biggest rallies that I have seen earlier in the year uh, on January 26th, which we call Invasion Day. Um, there was a huge rally as well. So more and more people are showing solidarity with Aboriginal Australians and demanding treaties and justice. And demanding uh, exactly what? Because justice is such a broad concept. I'm interested in whether there were very concrete demands at today's rallies or whether they were more a cry of, of, of rage and a cry of empathy. Of course, they were a cry of empathy. They were a cry of sadness and they were a cry of frustration and rage. But people want Aboriginal deaths in custody to end. Uh, people want justice, generally violence, police, police brutality to end. People want structural racism that is institutionalized in, in Australia to end. And they want those recommendations of the Royal Commission 30 years ago to be implemented now. Senator Faruqi, we have to leave it there, but we're grateful to you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.